chapter twenty one of the forbidden way by george gibbs this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony oliva l'homme dispose jeff ray had listened in curiosity then in amazement his eyes turned toward the sawatch peak whose snow-cap caught a reflection of the setting sun he had accustomed himself to unusual audacities on the part of his companion but the frankness of her speech had outdone anything he could remember when he turned his look in her direction it was with a shrewd glance of appraisement like the one she felt in the morning when she had first appeared in his office as they reached an opening in the trees jeff halted his horse and dismounted it's early yet let's sit for a while throw your bridle over his head he'll stand mrs cheyne got down and they sat on a rock facing the slope which dropped away gently to the valley jeff took out his tobacco and papers and deftly rolled a cigarette while rita cheyne watched him he offered to make her one but she refused you got me guessing now rita he said with a laugh more than once in new york i wondered what sort of a woman you really were i thought i'd learned a thing or two before i came away but i'll admit you've upset all my calculations i've always known you were clever when it came to the real business of disguising your thoughts i know you never mean what you say but i can't understand anybody traveling two thousand miles to create a false impression you know as well as i do that all this talk of yours about friendship is mere clever nonsense i know what friendship means and i guess i know what love means too but there isn't any way that you can mix them up so that i won't know one from the other i'm not trying to mix them up you're trying to mix me up then he took her hand in his and made her look at him you've been playing with me for some time i was a different kind of a breed from anything you'd been used to in new york and you like to wind me up so that you could see the wheels go round you've had a lot of fun out of me in one way or another and you still find me amusing she stopped indignantly don't you believe in me no the things you say are too clever to be genuine for one thing you're too cold-blooded for another one can't think unless one is cold-blooded when a woman's in love she doesn't want to think i'm not in love i simply say i'll marry you that's all you're talking nonsense i never was saner in my life i want you to believe in my kind of friendship eight hundred thousand dollars worth of friendship is not to be sneezed at stop jeff you're brutal i won't listen you've got to i've listened to you now you must listen to me and i'm going to make you play the game with your cards above the table so far as i can understand you hold the new york record for broken hearts to date and i was warned that you had strewn your wrecks along the whole front of central park east but i suppose i was too much flattered when you showed me attention to take to my heels i liked you and i wanted you to like me perhaps we both liked each other for the same reason with the same motive curiosity you put me in odd situations just to see what i do i liked to be with you you purred like a kitten in the sun and i liked to hear you so i was willing to perform for that privilege you claimed me for a friend but you tried your best to make me lose my head that's true you can't deny it i didn't lose it because well because i had made up my mind that i wouldn't i don't know whether you were disappointed or not but i know you were surprised because you weren't in the habit of missing a trick when you played that game she withdrew her hand abruptly and turned her head away that isn't true she murmured you must not speak to me so i've got to every word of what i say is true and you know it 
it's not true now yes it's true now i know how much you really care about me you've got so much in life that you're never really interested in anything except the things you can't get you like me because you know i'm out of your reach and you can't have me even if i wanted you to you're a great artist but i don't think you really ever fooled me much you like to run with a fast and frenchy set just because it gives your cleverness a chance it couldn't have with the dodos but you don't mind being talked about because your conscience is clear you like the excitement of running into danger just to prove your cleverness in getting out of it see here rita this time you're going too far i suppose i ought to feel very proud of the faith you put in me and your willingness to trust yourself so completely in my hands i guess i do but things are different with me somehow i told you i was going to hell pretty fast and i'm not in the mood to be trifled with i'm not trifling she had caught a sinister note in his voice and looked up at him in alarm there's a way to prove that how this he put his arms around her turned her face to his and held it there while he looked a moment into her eyes but she struggled and held away from him suddenly discovering something unfamiliar in the roughness of his touch and the expression in his eyes let me go she cried struggling desperately to be free you'll kiss me no never not after that after what the way you speak to me you're rough i'll not let you go until you tell me why you came here if you love me you'll look in my eyes and tell me so i don't love you she panted still struggling i never shall let me go i say he laughed at her her struggles were so futile art could not avail her here she realized it at last and lay quietly in his arms her eyes closed her figure relaxed while he kissed her as he pleased will you tell me you love me no i loathe you then she began struggling again he released her and she flung away and stood facing him her hat off hair in disorder cheeks flaming her body trembling with rage and dismay oh that you could have touched me so why rita he began don't speak to me she moved toward the horses i'm going she asserted where to mesa city how can you you don't know the way i'll find the way oh she stamped her foot in rage and then without other warning sank on a rock nearby and burst into tears jeff ray rose uncertainly and stared at her wide-eyed like other more practiced men in similar situations unaccountably at a loss he had acted on impulse with a sense of fitting capably into a situation he watched her in amazement for her tears were genuine no woman was clever enough to be able to cry like that there was no feminine artistry here she was only a child who had made the discovery that her doll is stuffed with sawdust he realized that perhaps for the first time he saw her divested of her artifice the polite mummery of the world the real rita chain who all her life had wanted to want something and now that she had found what it was could not have it just as she wanted it it was real woe there was no doubt of that the pathetic woe of childhood he went over to her and laid his hand gently on her shoulder but she would not raise her head and it almost seemed as though she had forgotten him he stood beside her for some moments looking down at her with a changing expression the hard lines she had discovered in his face were softened the frown relaxed and at his lips there came the flicker of a smile i-i'm sorry he said at last i-i made a mistake rita i made a mistake the sobs began anew how-how could you treat me so there was no reply to that so he stood silently and waited for the storm to pass 
meanwhile he had the good taste not to touch her again but as the sobs diminished he repeated i made a mistake rita you made me think oh only her face appeared for a moment above her arms and then instantly disappeared you're odious why rita he said with warm frankness how could i believe anything else all your talk of friendship why you asked me to marry you what did you expect of me not that not what you did the way you did it you forgave me once she raised her head careless of the tears which still coursed yes i forgave you then but not now i can't forgive you now no man ever kissed a woman the way you kissed me unless he is mad about her or despises her despises yes you might as well ask me to forgive you for murdering my brother you've killed something inside me my pride i think i can never never forget that she got up and turned her back to him fingering for her handkerchief she had none he slowly undid the kerchief from around his own neck and put it in her hand don't cry rita cry she wheeled around still staunching her tears no i'll not cry i was a fool to cry i'll not cry any more i cried because because i was disappointed that any one i trusted could be so base i'm not so dreadful as all that you must admit i'll admit nothing except that i made a mistake too it hasn't been a pleasant awakening i know now what those kisses meant ray's incomprehension was deeper i wish i did he said i was sure they wouldn't do you any harm you wouldn't have been so frank with me if you hadn't been pretty sure of yourself that was my mistake i was so sure of myself i didn't think it necessary to be sure of you and while jeff was trying to understand what she meant she went on those were not my kisses they were impersonal and might have been given to any woman that is any woman who would allow them each of them a separate insult judas kisses treacherous kisses kisses of retaliation of revenge what on earth are you talking about you've been using me to square your accounts with your wife that's all scornfully as if you didn't know he flushed crimson and bit his lips that's not true he muttered what does it matter to my wife why should she care who i kiss or why it doesn't matter to her i suppose she said slightly ironical she is her own mistress again but it does to you curiously enough you're still in love with your wife she's in love with somebody else naturally it wounds your self-esteem that precious self-esteem of yours that's more stupendous than the mountain above you she hurts you and you come running to me for the liniment thanks you've come to the wrong shop mr ray jeff's brows darkened he opened his mouth as though to speak but thought better of it as rita cheyne took up the bridle of her horse and led him to a rock that she might mount jeff interfered one moment rita i think we'd better have this thing out i'm beginning to understand better the width of the breach between us it's widened some to-day and i don't believe you're going to try to make it up to-morrow i'm sorry but i'm not going to have any more misunderstandings either i want you to forgive me if you can i've cared for you a good deal enough to make me sorry you were only fooling things don't seem to be going my way and i've had a lot of thinking to do that hasn't made me any too cheerful i don't seem to see things just the way i did this fight has made me bitter i've got everything against me your world the organized forces of your world against a rank outsider i belong to the people who work with their hands i've always been pretty proud of that i went east and mixed up with a lot of your kind of people i had a good time they asked me to their houses 
gave me their wine and food they knew what they were about they had need of me but no matter what they said or did they never for a moment let me forget what i'd come from you were the only one of all that crowd who tried to make me feel differently was it any wonder that i was grateful for it your gratitude takes a curious form he held up a hand in protest then you uh, you liked me because i said just what i thought whenever i thought it but even with you i never forgot it wasn't possible for us ever to reach an understanding of perfect equality you played with life you had been taught to life is a kind of joke to you people are incidents only important when they give you amusement i've been more important than others for that reason because i gave you more amusement than others but there's never been any doubt that i was only an incident to me life is a grim problem i've felt its weight and i know to-day you talked of making a marriage as i would speak of making a cigarette it was too cold-blooded even for humor you refuse me then do you jeff she laughed but he made no reply to her banter i've done with marriage he went on i tried it and i failed just as you tried it and failed but i'm not ready as you are to make a joke of it failures are not the kind of things i like to joke about you joke because joking makes you forget i'm not trying to forget i couldn't if i wanted to i've learned that out here my wife can do as she likes if she wants to marry court bent i'll give her a divorce but as for me i've done with it for good jeff had sunk to the rock beside her his head in his hands while she stood a little way off looking down at him their relative attitudes seemed somehow to make a difference in her way of thinking of him in spite of the light bitterness of her mood she too felt the weight of his thoughts do you mean to say she murmured half in pity half in contempt that you still love your wife as much as this but he made no reply it's really quite extraordinary she went on with a manner which seemed to go with upraised brows and a lorgnon you're really the most wonderful person i've ever known this is the kind of fidelity one usually associates with the noble house dog i'm sure she'd be flattered but why will you give her a divorce since you're not going to marry what's the use he rose and went to the horses come he said it's getting late let's get back she refused his help mounted alone and silently they rode down the slope through the underbrush where after a while jeff found a trail in the open does this lead to mesa city she asked he nodded good-bye then she flourished her hand and before he realized it was off and had soon disappeared from sight he urged his horse forward into a full gallop but saw that he could not catch her apache was the faster horse and his own animal carried too much weight so after a few miles he gave up the race walked his winded horse and gave himself up to his thoughts the exercise had refreshed his mind and he was able to think with calm amusement of the little comedy in which he had just been an actor what a spoiled child she was he couldn't understand why he had ever been afraid of her it was only pity he felt now the pity of those tears the only really inartistic thing rita had ever been guilty of for her face had not been so pretty when she cried and yet they appealed to him more strongly than any token she had ever given him what did they mean he had hurt her pride of course he had had to do that but somehow his conscience didn't seem to trouble him much about the state of rita's heart love meant something different to him from the kind of cold analytical thing 
rita cheyne was capable of if it hadn't been for those tears they worried him as he reached the edge of a wood he caught a glimpse of her just disappearing over the brow of a hill half a mile away so he urged his horse forward it wouldn't do to have her ride into mesa without him he rode hard and suddenly came upon her kneeling at the border of a stream dipping his bandana into the water and touching her eyes when she saw him she looked up pertly and he saw that she was only a child washing its face hello she said i was waiting for you do you see what i'm doing it's a right do i look like niobe i'm washing my hands of you jeff got down and stood beside her do be sensible rita i am am i clean you haven't a powder puff about you have you you're going to tell me you forgive me there's nothing to forgive if you think there's anything to forgive i'll forgive of course she got up from her knees wiping her face sat down on a tree trunk and motioned him to sit beside her jeff she said i've a confession to make you know what it is because you're cleverer than you have any right to be i don't love you really you know and i'm pretty sure it isn't in me to love anyone except myself it has always made me furious to think that i couldn't do anything with you from the first i set my heart on having you for myself not because i wanted to laugh at you i couldn't have done that but because you were in love with your wife why do you hate her so i don't i don't hate anyone but she irritated me she was so self-satisfied so genuine so handsome three things which i am not she waited for him to contradict her but jeff was frowning at vacancy just to satisfy my self-esteem which is almost as great as yours jeff ray i would have moved mountains to win and i even let you drag my pride in the dust before i discovered that i couldn't i die pretty hard but i know when i'm dead don't rita you and i are going to be better friends than ever no jeff i'm going east tomorrow. i don't want to see you to see you would be to remind me of my insufficiencies you've made a friend no shaking her head that won't do it never does i may have tried to deceive you but i know better friendship is masculine or it's feminine it can't be both i'm going away at once i'm not going to see you again oh yes you are to-morrow we'll no i'd go to-night if there was a train i want you to do one thing for me though will you if i can that money the money for that stock i want to leave it with you to use or not to use as you think best i've got a great deal of money much more than is good for me jeff shook his head no rita no i can't do that if i'm going to lose i'll lose alone but if you win she turned and gave him her hand you will i've sworn you will and here's luck on it instead of clasping her hand as she intended he should he raised it to his lips and kissed it gently as under different conditions he might have kissed her lips she looked down at the top of his head and closed her eyes a moment but when he looked up she was smiling gaily you're a good sport rita he said yes she said coolly i believe i am they rode into mesa city slowly the valley was already wrapped in shadow but above them the upper half of sawatch peak was afire with the sunset the evening train was in and had puffed its way up to the yard there was a crowd at the post office waiting for mail and scattered groups here and there were chatting with the arrivals ray and mrs cheyne climbed the slope to the kinney house where a cowboy from the home ranch was waiting for their horses 
they dismounted and went indoors to the office where a solitary lady in a dark dress was signing her name to the hotel register at the sound of their voices she turned and straightened suddenly very pale and tense and then before jeff could speak turned again quickly to the clerk and said quietly if you'll show me the way up at once please i'd like to go to my room End of chapter 21